but we don't really need him. <laughs> we don't really need him. He was more of a, it was, uh, and and all his press person's probably listening, but he was more of a distraction today than anything. Uh, Mr. Chaz in the building, my man. Which, by the way, before we get into your interview, I have a little interesting yeah. story I'm going to share with you. Oh. Uh, okay. I am teasing a building with okay. the entourage and the purple hat. Yeah. You're like the third Dudley boy with that hat. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if Mike Game was here, he'd get the reference. <laughs> Oh, I'll I'll tell you. Be glad that Mike Gates on here. Man. <laughs> it's Man. just it's a circus when Gooseby's around. I, I, I'm supposed to be doing some doing something with him. Matter of fact, I chopped it up with him like last week. Oh shit! Really? Uh oh, we might be having him. Well, he told me he's wanting to make a comeback. Yeah, I, I got one of my producers man trying to make up a. Make oh, I will have to question him on that. <laughs> When I see him this evening at the WrestleMania party, I might have to question him on that. Well, uh, Mr. Chaz, of course, as, as you see on the wall there, we have our poster from when I had my roast, which you were a part of. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was good times. It is hilarious because ever since then, um, the the guy that hosted the, the event Double Barrel Grill, Mitch Bass and everybody, well, Mitch, he went out of business, as they say. Damn. And he, for the last two years or so, I think that was, I think that was about a year, year or two ago, he has been telling this story all over Hutchinson about the fact that you skipped out on paying the cover for your girlfriend. And he's been telling this story about how you went one way, she went another, and then one of you jumped in the car and drove away. And I'm like, they were guests. They shouldn't have had to like, pay a cover, period. How we going yeah, exactly. <laughs> so to like, skip, <laughs> skip out on paying the tab when, one, we were on the VIP list? And then, two, so the VIP list ain't paid. So you mean tell me that VIP needed to pay? Like, are you serious? How's that a VIP list? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a, okay, we're going to charge them $2 less than everybody else list. That's what, no, nah, you're out of here. Like, I was on the list. Oh, well, your name ain't exactly what's on the list. Dude, my, uh, Mr. Chaz is on the oh. list. Plus one. <laughs> this is my plus one. I'm Mr. Chaz. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, you need to pay. Uh, man, get out of here. No. No. If that could have been a Thug Life video, <laughs> like they put this on Facebook, <laughs> that would have been a Thug Man, I wish they had the Thug Life. Man, get out of my face. Man. <laughs> thug Life. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, really? Are you still? That's two years ago. You still? Well, see, he's anyway? still he's still hung up also on and 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 Teasy, you're gonna love this because because we're boys with Mike Game and and, and Mr. Chaz knows of Mike Game. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was one time that Mike was, and I'm and I'm shocked to report this, drunk. Oh, I man. know that it is that he's he's. He never, never drinks. It's very shocking. But he was drunk out at this double barrel. And they had a comedian on stage by the name of James Davis. And he was heckling him. But Mike Game heckling somebody? No, never. <laughs> so he was heckling James Davis. And Mitch tells him, he goes, hey, I need to see, Jiggy needs to see you in the back. Now, I'm standing right next to Mike while he's heckling him. Well, Mike's drunk. He's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, where the fuck's Mike going? <laughs> he goes to the back. And Mike's like, oh, you lied, dog. Jiggy's not back here. <laughs> and then, and then he, uh, he's like, I'm going back out there. And Mitch is like, no, and grabs him. And you know how, how Mitch is. Yeah. He's, uh, and so he grabs Mike by the shoulders, and Mike just swings his head back and headbutts Mitch in the face. <laughs> Then about that time, here comes James Davis off the stage, and he's like, Motherfucker, what do you think you're doing? Blah, 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 blah. They get into this big little shouting match. Well, then everybody goes outside, and then it, dis it, it ends up dispersing. But Mitch tells two stories and has told two stories forever. The one about Ms. The Chaz, <laughs> and two about getting headbutted by Gooseby. My, my, my Ms. The Chaz. <laughs> 
Man, if you really want that ten dollars, man, hit me up on my Facebook, M I Z T U H. You spell Chaz, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> out of here with that ten bucks, man. I fed the homeless with that ten bucks. <laughs> I, <fed the> <laughs> I, I went and bought them a two piece and a biscuit with that ten bucks. Calm down. Come on, man. You serious? <laughs> He still talks about that ten bucks. Oh, come on. I know. Oh, <laughs> He's still talking about Spring it. Bring like eight hot dogs right now for a quick trip. Out of here. Well, well, let let's do this for the people that that may not know you, my man, okay. as well as I do. Give us a brief history on your music career. Uh, uh, for instance, when did you start making music, brother? Uh, I started in '99. Uh, was, I wasn't even out of high school yet when I started doing music. Um, since then, I've done 33 uh, productions. That means engineering, wow. or making beats, or you know, audio, all that. Uh, 33 different projects. Um, one I'm working on right now, the 500 Mics album, which is my, yes. my fifth solo album. Uh, and just been doing stuff all over the nation. Uh, yeah. Performed in Colorado, just had some stuff. Actually, two two years ago, we just went overseas uh, and holy crap, had a, had a seven city tour. Um, it was a good time, so you know. Holy crap! Well, I know before the show, we were standing outside, and 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 Teasy was saying the one thing that I've said for the longest time, which is all these artists who are so hyped up on being signed. Yeah. If you're independent, you can do a hell of a lot, and. Yeah you're independent you're going overseas yeah i mean there, there's a lot of outlets that you can do um i wish i could have did more overseas there was some djs that i hooked up with via new york that put me on the djs and stuff over there yeah. in germany and in france and stuff like that but uh there's a lot if you know people people who know you have talent know that you have that hustle they, they're willing to be like hey man you know hook up with my boy you know my friend of a friend of a friend because it's not always about what you know it's who you know you know and once you once you get them connections and you can use them them outlets and them avenues it, it takes you in different yep. directions but it always takes you towards your goal there was there was a guy uh that had this thing called project independent and it was like a heavy metal right. like american idol type deal and at the end of the at the end of the whole thing, the winning band got to go on a fifty city tour the next year. And he always told everybody, he's like, We when you win Project Independent, you get uh new band instruments, you get a bus, you get everything. And he says there's 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 two kinds of people that win this. The one that makes the contact, so then the next year they can book another fifty city tour. Or there's the people that spend the entire year partying going, ah, I got free band gear and a bus. Uh, yep. And then they're playing back in front of 20 people at their hometown bar the next year. Right. And so you're right. It's the making the making the connections, man. Do it, it absolutely is making the connections because, you know, regardless what people say, oh, I did it by myself. No, somebody helped you somewhere. You, know, you, you had to know yep. somebody who had to know somebody who you had to talk to or you had to prove you know i mean it, it's like a lot of people uh who go through this whole thing in high school they don't want to go to college or whatever and so they get in these jobs that are like oh well you need job experience it's the same with hip-hop man like a lot of venues don't want to take you in unless well where else have you performed where's your music what, where's this where's that you know give me a reason to believe yep. in your movement and what you do yep. and then we can continue to do business with you and you do find those people who are like okay i'm gonna I'm put i'm gonna i'm gonna risk you know my night and put you on but if you do good for them they do good for you, you know? yep not everybody's trying to rip you off. <laughs> Not everybody's trying to rip you off. I artists that are like that, man. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that because everybody's trying to get a piece of my cake. Look, you got to make the cake first. <laughs> you got you know, to put the ingredients the cake first, you know? You know, you got to crack them eggs first, you know? Throw that flour in there, son. You know, I, I cook, I, you know, up at the, the college and stuff like that. I know the ingredients you got to put You got to put the ingredients You got to put the ingredients in there. Before you can talk about somebody stealing your cake. They can't steal something you ain't got. 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you ain't got it, they're not taking nothing. You know I mean, just your time, I guess. I mean, but it is what it is. But We've got uh, the fantastic IMTZ in studio with us. We've also talking to my man right now, Mr. Chaz, and uh, I'll tell you, brother, you 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 have you have been all over the place, done all sorts of different things. What was your motivational force in starting to get into music? Uh, my motivational force was just my home life. Uh, you know, I mean, some people, when when bad things happen to them, either one or two things happen. They they succumb to what's going on, or they rise above it, and. I can honestly say that from time and time again, I've rose above anything and everything that's ever been thrown at me. You know, uh, I had some tragic stuff that happened uh, back in 09. I bounced back from that. Had something that happened uh, around this time last year. Bounced back from it. I mean, I'm not going to let what's thrown at me defeat me just because yeah. it's it's that horrible unless i'm like on my deathbed or dying i'm gonna still be in the studio i'm gonna be kanye spinning through the world yeah you know i'm gonna go ahead and uh <laughs> spit this real quick you know what i mean you know half my jaw in the back of my throat and stuff you know i mean i'm still gonna do that that's still gonna be me uh, to the death of me you know i might still be in the grave with like some beat headphones on or something. <laughs> Having my track play. I hope they give me them titanium batteries so my track can play for a thousand years while I'm in the grave. Hell yeah! You know? I'm trying to, that, that's, that's what I'm trying to be like. That's that's what I'm about. Like, you know, you, you hear artists like Lil Wayne talk about all I know is music. Nah, for real. All I know is music. Is music. I can't play ball. I'm good at video games. Man, I'm not good at video don't games. Don't ask me to roll your blunt. I roll my blunt like I like it. All I know is music. <laughs> you know? All I know is music. That's all. Awesome. Holla at me. You want to know how to engineer? Come on. That's it. I can't play soccer. None of that. <laughs> I can't play soccer. None of that. <laughs> I can't, I can't That's help you awesome. kid with hopscotch. I can't help you kid with hopscotch. <laughs> Music. <laughs> you want to know how to write a bar? Come on, let me. There you go. <laughs> We've got uh, a great, great guy in studio, Ms. DeChaz. And uh, what, what were some of your influences, man, getting into this whole thing? And uh, I know what. Um, man, I always hate answering this question because it's never the – the answer anybody wants to hear, but <laughs> I'm going to do this in a two-part answer. How about that? Okay. So, the home life, my motivation was my family. The fact that, you know, all of my family is influenced or does music. You know, all of my cousins, sisters, brothers, yeah. all that. They they have a part of music somewhere, whether they're playing instruments, writing rhymes, poetry, singing, stuff like that. You know, my dad, uh, before he joined the military, he actually you know, used to sing and stuff like that. So it's always been in the genes. But I think a continuing force outside of it would be uh, me listening to the radio and hearing acts like uh, TLC because they used to play Creep like all the time in Junction Run. It was like, <laughs> it was like, hey, we're going to play this real quick. And so I creep. Oh, shit, it's on again. It was, wasn't it just all two minutes ago? Wasn't it just and, all you know, two minutes so it's ago? Like, the death of radio. <laughs> stuff like that but then after that you know tupac biggie you know nas jay-z i was listening to devin the dude i was listening devin to the Shore. dude i was listening to you know I was didn't you open East for Coast. devin the dude at I one point devin the dude down here Wichita, you know so it's like that's the good thing about it it's like even though you know even though people are like oh you know music is a dying thing in in, in kansas you know me samg our crew amp squad we we're living proof that if you do continue to do well yeah, and do gain the contacts, you can open for, you know, I love Devin the dude. That was one of my idols. When I opened up for Twister, that was one of my idols. Bone, you know, uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony, that was one of, you know, I, my homeboy, you know, AR, AR-16, AR-16 Films, shout out. Uh, you know, we opened up and it was like, it was one of his things. He was like, man, I never thought I would ever meet Bone Thugs and Harmony. He said... That's how you yeah. know when you really doing stuff. When you get to that yeah. position where you meeting your idols where you grew up, you know? The people you looked up to for music. That's how you know that you're doing good things. But that only comes with getting the contacts. You can't do that. You can't. I mean, some people, you know, oh, I'm going to just drop 1500 I didn't pay nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Take your 
fifteen hundred and go buy you some better sounding, uh, you know, engineer. Better stuff, you know sounding I mean? stuff. You know, go buy you a, somebody who can mix your music down. You know That's what I mean? Talking. You know, I be I be in the studio all the time. If I ain't working, it's music related. <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, it comes the, those idols. Those are the people that I looked up to. You know, Three Six Mafia. We had we had the opportunity to meet Three Six Mafia. And, oh well, they're the Mafia Six now, but. You know, we had an opportunity. I, I the just mafia know why later six. people get on it. Oh, nigga, you know this is the mafia six now. You know, on there, you know, messing up names and stuff, man. I, you know, cold stove killer, man. Get out of my inbox, all right? Get out of my <laughs> inbox. <laughs> out of my inbox. I'm sorry, the mafia. I'm not saying they would call me. Just other people who would be like politically correct hip hop people yeah. would be like, nah, they the mafia six now. Shout out to the politically hip hop correct. I love y'all. Stay out of my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, meeting all these artists, you know, and looking up to them from where I was at, at a standpoint of a young age growing up, that those were my influences. Yeah. You know, because, you know, uh, my dad's side of the family, we are from Alabama. So I have a lot of, you know, uh, s- southern properties and characteristics to myself. So it's like I can I can be put anywhere and everywhere and in, in in adapt to where yeah. I'm at as far as like musically and stuff like that and, and a lot of artists can't and I do give shout out to all those people who are versatile like that um, but listening to across the board you don't hear many people that say they listen to uh, east coast west coast down south I was listening to people like have you ever heard of a, a French rapper man can't understand a word they saying but it's dope I don't care what nobody <laughs> says I like, look I understand like two words in there but that shit was hot he said my name and that can't was it. That understand was anything saying. he's saying. But you know, it just it, it just being across the board and hearing everything for what it is and taking it in, that was the driving force for, you know, you know, my influences and all that. Now, That's I know pretty I badass. Track. No, 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 no. I love it, brain. brother. You know, I'll be in a second squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. So, so those, those are my influences. <laughs> You know, but it's not just. I kind of renounced my uh, my uh, my ties to hip hop last year. Um, <laughs> I got on Facebook. I told you him renounced your like, like citizenship to yeah, hip hop. You know, <laughs> it was kind of one of them things where, like, you know, I'm kind of tired of uh, being put into a label, and especially a label that I feel is is being overpopulated by people who are not even into. You know, there's some artists that are R&B that are still called yeah. hip hop, and there's some people that are, you know, like hip hop. You know, H O P. You know, H I. And then there's hip hop nonsense. Hip hop, and they're still being put into <laughs> hip hop. And I'm like, we got there's different genres and places. So I was like, you know what? I'm not a hip hop artist anymore. Just call me an artist. Yeah. If I if I if I get a rock band tomorrow, man, I'm still an artist. Don't call me rock. Just call me art artistic. Teasy, what what do you think about that? Shit, sure, I'm with it, man. Shit, <laughs> sure, I'm with it, man. <laughs> I, I feel 100 percent on that shit, man. Like I don't say that I'm a rapper anymore. I don't right. say that I'm a hip hop yep. artist. I'm just a, a music artist. I'm just a music I'm artist. Like, That's you know, it. I can get in there and, and work with my my engineer on engineering some of the. Yep. Or I can work with my producer on, on the beat. Add them maracas, yeah, that's yeah. hot. You know, <laughs> Add them maracas, speed speed that's speed hot. You know? Well, let's do this. We're going to take a time out. When we come back, we'll keep chatting with Mr. Chaz. We'll work IMTZ in there. TZ, if you have any questions at all, jump in here. Sure. My man. We're going to do this. We're going to take a time.